ladies. Happy Monday morning. I hope that you're having a good start to your week. And um, this week I'm going to start off with kind of a little uh, devotional thought or one of those life moment thoughts. Um, I'm kind of a planner and um, I'm a planner to a certain extent. I like to know the details. I like to know why we're doing what we're doing. And um, if you just give me those details, I'm good to go. Well, um, sort of an example, we're going to look today at the fall of Jericho. Um, that's where I am in the Bible today in Joshua, um, end of uh, chapter five and beginning of verse, uh, or not verses, uh, beginning of chapter six. So we're going to look a little bit in that section and, um, <clears throat> and just how God tells the people to do something and they obey, but he doesn't give them all. He gives them a lot of details, but he doesn't necessarily give them the why. And so we're going to look at that today. But I kind of, as I was thinking about this, I was wondering, well, what's kind of an example of that? Because normally I am sort of a go-getter in the sense of I like to get the job done. I um, also want to know why we're doing the job this way. And if you just give me a good example or a good reason why, then I'm good to go. Um, and so an example that came to me was um, my family, we tend to, we've always kind of gone on Disney vacations, Disney World vacations. That's sort of our thing that we did when I was a kid. Every few years we'd go and it was just kind of our magical nostalgia. It's very nostalgic for me, <laughs> bringing back childhood memories whenever we do go. And um, we went, was it two years ago, something like that. Um, it was when I was engaged. It's been about a year and a half. And so my fiance, now husband, um, Matheny, came with me, came with not just me, my entire family. He came with our whole family. And um, I remember telling him, the one day for, for Animal Kingdom, if you've been, the, there's a ride there called Flight of Passage, and it's from the movie Avatar, and it basically, you get to step into the movie, and you get to ride a dragon, and all these neat things, it's Disney magic, things that Disney can do that's just incredible, and give you this awesome experience, and um, I remember telling him what time we were going to wake up in the morning, <laughs> and he couldn't believe how early we were going to get up, and didn't understand the why, and I was like, trust me, it's going to be worth it, and sure enough, we got there early. We got to ride it. We got to get off and ride it again. And then we had um, the genie pass or whatever to ride it again. So really, before anybody else had really ridden it, us in the early risers, we got to ride it three times. And I remember, <laughs> like, he was not so happy about waking up early. But once we did that, he said, now I get it. Now I understand why we're waking up early. The understanding clicked in. And so that's kind of where we're going to um, sit today. Because for me, I'd been on lots of Disney trips where, and I'll, I'll be guilty, I'm a planner, but I don't always like to do the plans. So me and my older sister were both like, we just kind of go with the flow. Like, but we let my mom and my younger sister and my older brother, they love planning out these trips. And so... My older sister, Courtney, and I, we just kind of go along with the flow because we trust them that they're going <laughs> to create this great trip for us, which they always do. And um, it's a lot of fun. And so we had that background, that back experience um, in our minds. And so we knew it was going to be good. And so once Matheny then learned that this is what it's going to be, he was then ready to go and, okay, whatever the plan is, let's rock and roll with it. Not that he fought me on it, but I could just tell he was irritated <laughs> waking up so early. But now we're going to turn, I know that's a kind of a weird example, but we're going to turn to Jericho and we're going to look at Joshua and something that God does he first sets it up, sets up this whole scene by reminding Joshua and the people of Israel of who he is. So first he splits the Jordan River. He stops the flow of the Jordan River of direct reflection for this generation because um, those who had crossed the Red Sea have all, have all passed in the desert. And you've got a direct reflection, reflection of crossing the Jordan River. And so they see this miracle. And so it's, oh, yes, we remember um, these aren't just stories. Now we've experienced God showing us his miraculous deeds. And then we get this reflection again with Joshua essentially being commissioned in the same way that Moses was. And so I want you to just listen. So God brings to mind these um these stories that happened to the generation beforehand shows that I like in a sense that God's saying, I am still, I am, I, I am that I am. I am the God who did all these things and I'm doing them for you now so that when I give you these instructions for Jericho, you will obey them because you have trust in me. And so I want you to just listen to these words. I am in Joshua chapter five, beginning in verse 13. 
Now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, Are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replied. But as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, What message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. And Joshua did so. Direct reflection of what happens with Moses at the burning bush. Take off your sandals for where you're standing is holy ground. And then now starting chapter 6. Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up, everyone straight in. So God lays out this very, very detailed plan. Um, you know, he has already put forth experience for this new generation to remember that I'm still the same God who split the Red Sea. I'm still the same God who commissioned Moses and I'm commissioning Joshua now as your leader. And then it all happens exactly as God said it would. And so there's this obedience that um, the people have toward God because they trust what he's done in the past that he is going to do again. And so it just got me thinking. And there was this phrase that somebody said to me this week said, oh, with just unconditional praise. And it was such a passing thought, unconditional praise. We talk a lot about unconditional love, but unconditional praise. So here we have the people of Israel standing up against the city who we have to remember that the Israelites were not a nation that had um, lots of experience in battle. They were not a nation, you know, this is a nation formerly of slaves that's now become a nation. And all of a sudden they're having to form an army and all these things, and yet they have God with them. But so there is some fear there. There's definitely fear there, but yet you've also seen these miracles that God has done, but there's some fear there. But I loved that phrase, unconditional praise, because we talk about God's unconditional love, but our response to that should be unconditional praise that no matter what, no matter what circumstances we are praising him wholly and completely um, trusting him and remembering what he has done and declaring the goodness that he will do, even if we don't know what that exactly is in the moment. And so I just want you to think about that today. I want you to think about unconditional praise, even when you don't understand unconditional praise, even when it hurts, unconditional praise, even when it is just not how we would do things. That's really hard. Or unconditional praise where it's, we have to recognize that what's happening is often for our benefit and to glorify him. So that's where we need to shift our focus is that in this moment, Lord, how are you being glorified? Where can I see that? And how can I glorify you through this? And so I just wanted to leave you kind of with two final thoughts, one, a prayer, and then one, <clears throat> something else I witnessed at night to shine. And, um, our prayer, rather than griping or saying, Lord, why, which is where I tend to go whenever it's, um, you know, plans that I don't fully understand the why. I like to know the why. I need to know the why. But if, um, rather than that, what if, rather than questioning him, we just pray, Lord, I want to see your glory in this. And even though I don't understand, I will give you unconditional praise for I know who you are. So giving God unconditional praise, even when we don't understand, even when it's confusing, even when we're not, we're just not certain what he's doing, giving him unconditional praise because of who he is and what he has done and what he is doing and what he will do. And so I just want you to focus on that. And then the last thing that I want to say, I kind of feel like I'm a little all over the place today. Um, there was this song at Night to Shine 
that we had in the gym um, playing. And there's a fun like line dance to it. I couldn't quite figure out the line dance, um, but I needed, would need to actually like take time to do it, but it's called Church Clap. And it's a song by KB and Lecrae. And um, it's talking about the like, the praising, praising the Lord and that church clap. And um, there was something so sweet about that moment. We had a gym full of people, of God's sons and daughters, dancing and praising the Lord, this kind of unconditional praise. And it felt so unconditional because um, if you don't know, Night to Shine is a night where we celebrate God's differently abled. And so it's celebrating those who have some special needs. And yet everyone was dancing in whatever manner they possibly could. And it was this unconditional praise that, yeah, there are some things that we don't understand the why. And yet we were still praising God and dancing and having a great time together. And it was just such a beautiful depiction, I think, of heaven and just how we will praise him for all eternity. And so if you want to go listen to a fun song, the church clap will get you get you ready to go for the day. Um, but uh, but it is definitely a fun song. And so I just want you to focus on that. You know, whatever your circumstances are today, Lord, I want to see your glory in this. And um, perhaps go listen to Church Clap. And it's a catchy song, so it'll probably get stuck in your head and be a good reminder throughout the day when it repeats Church Clap over and over in your head that I'm to praise him, I'm to praise him, I'm to praise him. So I hope that um, that encourages you this morning and that you spend today and all of this week praising the Lord unconditionally. Thank you.